Hey, it's Macro Geek. It is the middle of November 2020, and we got a new operating system for the RG351P this week. So we have Arcos, another rock chip operating system. Uh, one of the community developers made this for us. It's 64-bit by default, has a lot of updated emulator cores, and I think it looks pretty nice. A couple usability things. Dual thumbsticks to get into. The RetroArch menu is gone. It's all select. Select X is the default to get into RetroArch. A lot of the modifier keys are select based. We got a nice little video screensaver now. It's kind of a kiosk mode thing. Um, I really like how it looks. This is the NES theme. Item, other items of note. There's a new menu option down here. Oh, there's a ports section and the ports are already built. Uh, things like Doom, you will have to, I think Cave Story and Cannonball work out of the box. Doom 1 and 2 and Quake, you'll have to drop WAD or pack files into. Easy RPG, you can drop a compiled game in there. Pico 8, you need a retail Raspberry Pi license. Uh, you can drop your content from the Pi version in there. So that's kind of cool. Uh, supports Scum VMs. This new options menu gives, is where you access things like your Wi-Fi. I'll tell you the Wi-Fi menu is a little unintuitive. It uses the shoulder triggers to get between the different settings. There's a network updater. This is awesome. If you have the, the Wi-Fi dongle, I use this on the Go cable and the, uh, the Odroid. Um, it's upside down. The Odroid dongle. Um, it was upside down. There it is. Then I plug that in and you can hit the Wi-Fi updater and it'll pull the code from his GitHub and compile it. Um, there's a repair thing for the XFAT partition. Oh, XFAT, that's awesome. When you image this card, you just copy it, flash it to whatever card you've got, boot up the device, and it unpacks the XFAT partition for your games by itself and automatically extends it to the end of the card. So you don't have to use a partitioning tool to stretch that partition. It just does it, and then you pull it back out of the device and load your content up. Uh, what else we got? If you are trying to set stuff up for the first time, you can launch RetroArch from here. That top one is the one most of the emulator cores use. The bottom one is the one PSX uses. So the thing I noticed in here is, and I think by default this is on the... Um, by default, they use the green screen menus, but um, there is an option in here for accounts. Let me switch the drivers back. launch it the way it's supposed to look okay here we go um settings achievements there you go you can log in your achievement stuff here switch them on and that will have them turned on in all games that launch out of RetroArch. so you'll have to do it twice if you want it on playstation but um having the, a place to do the achievements and save your account info is really nice and I think you can, oh, you can also do it from this accounts tab, uh, which is under user. So, and then I like to go drivers, menu, XMV. I like to use the XMV menu, but you can do it however you want. And then select start twice, bails you out of that and back to the desktop. Um, trying to think what else. There is an updated build of the PSP emulator. It got a little bit better. It's still, you're never going to get super full speed PSP support on this thing. Like God of War is still not playable, but need for speed plays. Uh, Wipeout, no. Wipeout's about 60% real speed. Depends on the game quite a bit. Um, we seem to have just hit a cap of what this chip can do. So barring any breakthroughs on the emulator, 
I'm hitting the wrong button over and over. I think, and this emulator uses uh, L2 as the hotkey. PP, SSPP. So we'll show you performance here. So I feel like this build runs a little better on some emulators. Dreamcast and N64 seem just a little smoother, uh, but this has the latest PSP patches in it, and you can see I'm running at like 99%. And it'll bog down a couple times in the busier parts of the city, but it's playable. It's enjoyable. That's, that's kind of what I'm worried about. Um, I did notice, um, what was it? Lumens runs full speed now, which was great. So yeah, it de really depends on, uh, really depends on what game you're running on PSP, whether it's going to work or not, but Local Roco, Lumens, Mega Man has a little stutter from time to time. Castlevania X runs pretty well. God of War is no-go. Daxter runs really well now on the new build. Um, so you can find stuff. Um, but I would say PlayStation emulation is in a really good spot. Everything older than that runs really well. Dreamcast hit or miss depending on the title. Uh, N64 hit or miss depending on the title. Banjo-Kazooie runs fine for me. Um, I have been playing just a ton of... Where is it? I've been playing Newtopia. It is a Zelda knockoff for PC Engine. And let's see, I think it's select. Oh no, I just saved state over my save game. It's a good thing I've saved it to the file cabinet too. So. That just looks real nice. I always debate whether to put the scan lines on it or uh, not because this was available as both a desktop and a, or a, a console and a handheld game. But but that's the kind of games I've been playing. A lot of handheld stuff and a lot of classic consoles. Anyway, uh, ArcOS, really like it. And I uh, can't wait to see what else comes down the pipeline with it.